Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a part two video to my initial mast cell activation syndrome video. So I did a whole video on MCIS back in, I think the beginning of December. It's like two videos ago, ago. I'll have it linked um, so you can watch that. But I went over basically what mast cell activation syndrome is, um, how to diagnose and test for it, uh, basic treatment, basic symptoms, that sort of thing. And I've gotten a lot of follow-up questions since then. I also asked on my Instagram if there were follow-up questions people had and so I'm going to be answering all of those in this video so if you have no idea what mast cell is <laughs> go check out my first video uh, then come back and watch this and then if you have more questions of course you can always leave them in the comments and I'll get back to them um, as I'm able so first before we jump into this video don't forget to hit that little red subscribe button it means a lot and helps support my channel I try really hard to provide informational content and then some fun stuff too that you all may want to see and you're always allowed to request videos just leave them in the comments shoot me a DM on Instagram or uh, email whatever and so of course as always I'm not a doctor or practitioner these are simply my experiences and what I've researched so if you have concerns definitely bring them to your doctor and talk to your doctor before embarking on any treatment protocols. I have my computer here with the questions listed. There were some basic themes, so I'm going to just go right into it and answer those questions. The first big one, and this is one I just get all the time generally, is like, what are your triggers? What are mast cell triggers? Um, how do I identify my triggers? And this is such a hard question to answer. Like I said in my first video, it's so difficult to know what your symptoms are even with mast cell because it's different for everyone and so your triggers can be different because you may respond to things that other people don't for me it's anything that's um not natural or an environmental toxin so any type of perfume um dyes fragrances um that sort of stuff even essential oils can set me off because they're just too strong i can only use certain ones um other things that set me off i'm i can't even handle isopropyl alcohol like it has to be pure alcohol um, or I will get a rash from it um, adhesives those give me rashes so whenever my port dressing on or band-aid on I'll get a rash from that high histamine foods and then some certain other random foods um, especially high FODMAP foods will give me a reaction I'll get a digestive reaction to those I get headaches from perfumes and things like that those are kind of my responses to it is I'll get a headache I'll get really fatigued um, I can get ear ringing and sinus pressure for me altitude is a mast cell trigger so there can be anything environmental um, even if it's natural uh, that can give me a reaction changes in the air pressure can give me a reaction um, I can people can react to the heat or the cold I tend to react to the cold a lot of people will react to heat so like hot showers they can't take because they'll break out in a rash um, stress anything that is taxing on the immune system in any way so stress is a huge trigger for me I will get rashes I will get insane fatigue headaches eye pain ear ringing um, anything like that and so I usually know that I'm having a reaction because I can think back on if I just feel off I can think back on like what I've been exposed to or what I've done that day or if I'm really stressed out um, I always know that my ear ringing is a reaction um, any type of rash is tend generally a mast cell reaction um, even things like eczema can be that um, what else like I said, headaches, fatigue for me, like excess fatigue is usually a mast cell reaction unless I'm just like flaring limewise or sick or something like that. I think that's kind of like the best way to answer that. This is the struggle is, you know, what is a mast cell reaction? What are your symptoms? You kind of have to sort that out. I can't answer that for you. Um, you also have to, in terms of triggers, I, I kind of went over this in the first video as I generally say cut anything out that is not natural so any synthetic stuff get rid of the toxic fragrances the toxic cleaning chemicals the toxic stuff you use on your body um try a low histamine diet if you can cut out the processed stuff if you can finding your triggers is really difficult and it's kind of just like a whole trial and error thing for me dyes are and i went over that in the first video as well dyes and medications count even that little bit can cause a reaction so I have to be really careful about finding clean medications without excipients. Um, so that's just a challenging part. It's uh, it's just a lot of trial and error. And like maybe you feel like you're having a reaction every day and you cut one thing out of your life that you're using all the time. And then you realize you're not having a reaction. And you go and look at the ingredients on that shampoo bottle or something. And you're like, okay, so 
it's probably like this fragrance or you know this additive that I don't tolerate <laughs> it's a little bit tricky um, but again trial and error the second big question I got was how do you handle a mass cell flare you you know you're having one how do you deal with it how do you calm your system down what do you do next um, and this is a great question and also a tough one not necessarily tough um, but you have to kind of figure out again what works for you I'm gonna give you a list of things that can be used to help stabilize those mast cells and bring down the reaction for me any type of detoxing is extremely helpful from Sweating is helpful for me just in general. If you're heat intolerant, that won't be great. But for me, taking a detox bath or um, jumping in my sauna, green juices, uh, dry brushing, anything to kind of get that lymph and blood flow to try and get the whatever set me off out of my system is really helpful. A lot of rest and getting really hydrated. So hydrated goes in with the detox um, and just try and like pee out whatever <laughs> has set me off. Um, the... Detoxing can help with inflammation. The um, hydration can help with inflammation as well. Rest just help. I usually am just so exhausted and I just feel like crap. So just resting is really helpful because the more I try and push, the more stress is put on my body. So the longer that reaction will last or the more intense it will be. So rest is another big one. Some things you can take, vitamin C is a really great way to detox. I will link the vitamin C that I use. Somebody asked in my last video, what vitamin C do you use that doesn't have absorbic acid? I use a cassava based one and I will link it in the description box so you know exactly what vitamin C I use. But taking high doses of vitamin C, increasing your mast cell meds. Again, talk to your doctor first, but for me, if I'm having a reaction, like sometimes I get a mast cell reaction with IVIG, so I increase my um, Zyzyl, which I take and that's usually the one that I'll increase. Sometimes I'll increase my ketotophen, but I'll increase it for that day or the next couple days just to help um, my system. Um, going back to kind of into that detox one is binders. So things like activated charcoal, chlorella, um, spirulina, and cilantro, those type of things help bind. Like if I've been exposed to food, um, if I bind, try and bind that, bind like gluten or bind dye or whatever, um, that can help clean me out and help with my reactions. Alka-Seltzer Gold is another great one because it helps balance the pH in your body. That helps with detox as well. Um, two other things I really love are nettle tea and dandelion root tea. They help a ton for me, so I will down those teas. Some people don't react well to tea because it's, um, since it's like dried, the histamine, like some people react histamine-wise, but those two teas seem to do really well for most people with mast cell, um, and they help me a lot. The next big question I got was about LDN, which is low dose naltrexone. So a lot of people in the chronic illness community have probably tried or are currently on low dose naltrexone. I take LDN and someone wanted to know about how LDN works um, to help the immune system and help with mast cells. LDN actually helps by modulating the immune system because it regulates T and B lymphocytes. LDN also reduces cytokines, which contribute to the inflammatory cascade. Um, so that can be, inflammation can obviously obviously be a result of MCAS um, and so that would be really helpful to reduce that inflammation but also reducing cytokines um, helps address faulty mast cells because mast cells um, can trigger inflammatory proteins so as you can see that's all connected there inflammation LDN helps lower inflammation for a number of reasons um, LDN also regulates cell growth so um, it can re regulate the production of mast cells to make sure we're not having too many mast cells I'm gonna link a couple articles and studies below so you can read a little bit more about that if you want to next big question I get a lot is how to get over your fear of trying new medications trying foods um, just new supplements like over that fear that you're going to have a reaction to everything and I have addressed this like in general I think in another YouTube video but um, essentially you have to stay calm <laughs> um, it can be hard like you you don't want to you fear the reaction because you don't obviously none of us want to react and feel like crap but the more stressed um, and fearful you get the more likely you'll be to have a reaction you might even have a reaction to something that you normally wouldn't because your system is so hyped up and you're stressing yourself out and you can make yourself sick that way. I have done this plenty of times. So the biggest thing I do is that I um, just try and remain calm. I do some deep breathing before I eat or before I take meds. I try not to focus on like, oh, I'm starting a new medication today. I just, I have my giant pill box, y'all know this. I put it in, I usually like, 
put the med in on whatever day I'm gonna start taking it, like let's say Wednesday, and then I'll write in my phone like I'm starting this med on Wednesday, and then I'll try and forget about it, and then just take my meds as normal. Um, and then if at the end of the day I feel like shit, I'll be like, oh yeah, I started that med today, so that's probably not working for me. Um, or that might be why I'm feeling like crap, I need to get through a couple more days. So a lot of it is just trying not to focus on the medication or supplement or food so much. Like trying to take my focus off that, um, be in an environment where I feel good. Like if I'm going to try a new food, I'll watch a funny YouTube video or, or eat out with friends because then I'm, my focus is on more on like something else and having fun and smiling and being positive rather than on the fear around that thing that I have to take or around the food or whatever. Um, so that's my biggest piece of advice. I've noticed that my mast cell reactions have gone down a ton by not focusing on especially food and fearing food so much and just being more um, happy and okay with it and being like, you know what, if I have a reaction, I have a reaction, I know how to deal with it, I'll rest tomorrow, I'll take my Alka-Seltzer Gold and detox, you know? Um, so just being a little calmer about the whole situation is very, very helpful. The other thing I wanna say is to go slow, like a lot of people ask about tolerating medications as well, and I think for me, this is how I've done everything is I start with the smallest dose I possibly can of anything like cut pills in half I will open capsules and just take a quarter of it I will just take the smallest dose I possibly can of something and then slowly build up like every couple days I'll increase the dose and I think that's just smart in general because then you can see if you react you can see like where if it is helping like where your tolerance level is um that sort of thing a lot of people ask about chromalin and actually I when I started chromalin I had several people tell me to do this I started with, they come in like little ampules. Most of you, if you take chromaline, you know it's a liquid. There's like eight ampules you have to take in a day. I started with half an ampule, ampule a day. So I took half a tube and a little bit of water um, and then slowly every three days I like went up. So then I went up to one tube a day before a meal and then I went up to um, one tube twice a day and then etc. until I got to the max dose and now I handle it just fine. There are a number of people I've talked to who have said they started with the dose they were told to take two capsules four times a day and had horrible reactions and then they went back and started really slowly and they're able to tolerate it and it's just building up that tolerance. So start slow with all your medications, supplements, food, you know, don't go out and eat a whole avocado which is high histamine, eat you know, maybe a bite of it or like a quarter of it or even less, an eighth of it to start and see how you react. And you're like, oh, I tolerated that. How, like, could I have a quarter and be okay? Could I have half an avocado and be okay? Okay, that's, I can only handle half an avocado. Then you know. The next question is about, someone asked, is it true that mast cell activation syndrome goes away if you treat the root cause? Based on my research and what I know, I believe that it can go away if you treat the root cause. Um, some forms of it are genetic, so they won't go away if you treat the root cause because they are the root cause because they're genetically based. Um, but I think that this is just what I've seen. So don't attack me for this. It's just what I've seen is that pretty much everyone I know with mast cell has something else um, like Lyme disease or EDS or um, Epstein-Barr. So they have some triggering um, thing, infection, whatever, that leads to the mast cell or plays into the mast cell. And so a big thing is addressing that and their mast cell seems to get better. And so um, I personally believe that if you treat the root cause, unless it's genetically based, that you can um, vastly improve or even cure, so to say, your mast cell. Um, some people, if you have an infection in your system forever and your mast cells have just been over-triggered, maybe not, um, I don't know, but Based on the research I've done, I definitely think that mast cell can, your mast cell can be improved at the very least with treating the root cause. And so in with that is a lot of people have asked me, did treating your Lyme help your mast cell? And is IVIG helping your mast cell? Um, and this is just where it gets complicated and confusing because I've had symptoms of some type of health issues basically since I was born. And we don't know if that's a Lyme or if it's mast cell. And I do have some genetic stuff going on there. Personally, I think it's Lyme related, triggered my mast cell. I've had mast cell issues. Um, and so my mast cell got worse as my Lyme progressed. But I think that was more a result of the Lyme wreaking havoc on my body and my immune system. And then my system just wasn't strong enough. And so like the mast cell kind of like, I don't want to say took over, but 
got overzealous <laughs> or was allowed to get overzealous because my immune system was so so all over the place um and so people are asking has IVIG helped my mast cell or like how long did it take to see improvements are the medications you're on helping your mast cell and in general yes I think they are um I'm about six months into IVIG we haven't found my stable dose. We haven't found my stable brand. I will be on it for at least another six months, probably longer. Um, and so I, in general, IVIG seems to be helping me as a whole. And so because IVIG is helping to regulate my immune system, I believe that's helping my, my mast cell. Um, and I think that my the medications I take do help. I don't notice that the medications help as much as I think the IVIG has helped. That's for me personally. I just tried so many medications and I, I don't know, they don't like make drastic differences that are life changing for me. <laughs> um, but also we can't get some other like heavier duty drugs covered by my insurance. So I haven't tried any of those. Um, I'm mostly focused on the IVIG, which I think is helping. I just don't like to talk too soon and I obviously still deal with mast cell stuff. But the biggest thing that's helped my mast cell is identifying my triggers, avoiding my triggers and managing stress. Um, so if you don't have access, if meds aren't working, if, um, you're still really struggling, those would be my biggest pieces of advice. Start working on trying to identify your triggers. Like I said, that will take time. Learn to avoid your triggers. Um, and like how to cope when you do have a mass cell flare. Maybe some of the tips I shared earlier would be helpful. And then the third thing being learn to manage your stress. I suck at stress management, but I've been working so hard on it and it's a Biggest thing I can tell you because it helps so much. Stop being so fearful. Um, I understand how challenging that is. I can, I'm gonna make a whole video on this because I, that's a huge thing that shifted for me at the end of 2018 is learning how to be less fearful of illness and, um, and start just being kind of more positive about things and approaching things with a more open mind instead of being so anxious about everything. And it helped my symptoms so much. I can't preach that enough. Um, the other big thing that's helped me a lot is eating low histamine. I hate saying that because um, I also preach a lot about how these healing diets are like so restrictive and can really mess with your head. But um, eating low histamine and then kind of going from there and figuring out which higher histamine foods I can tolerate or how much of them I can tolerate has been incredibly helpful and I would suggest I would suggest um, trying the low histamine diet if you can and addressing or at least cutting out some of those really high histamine foods so for me um, eating low FODMAP also has been shown to help with mast cell um, and obviously helps with SIBO but it's incredibly helpful for me so I kind of eat like a low FODMAP low histamine-ish diet the biggest things for me are garlic onion which are a high FODMAP, and then anything fermented, I just can't handle, and then obviously gluten and dairy, I don't do. Um, and and that, that helps a lot. So, <laughs> as always, I hope this video was helpful and answered the questions that you all have. If something wasn't clear or you still have more questions, of course, as always, leave them below and I will get back to you. Um, and like I said before, this is simply what I've learned in my experience. And like I said before, in my first mass cell video, definitely would check out Dr. Afrin's book. Um, but another big thing I just wanna say, this is kind of personal opinion again, is that I believe everything, your whole body is linked. Like I don't understand how we can separate body parts or body systems. Like our body is designed to work together as a whole. And so to say, let me just address this one system, one symptom and everything else will get better. Let me just address this one system. Um, seems kind of ridiculous to me. Like I believe everything's connected. So going back to kind of, that, going back to that question of will treating the root cause help treat the mast cell? Yeah, I think treating anything will help all the other things. It's just finding the right approach and treatment for you, which I know is difficult and complicated, and it's a lot of trial and error, and it's a lot of trying things, but like I've said a million times, listen to your gut instinct. It will not steer you wrong. Your body knows what it needs to heal, and if you just take some time to listen to what your body's asking for, it can save you a lot of time and energy trying things that your body is clearly rejecting. Um, so try and listen to your gut instinct. Yes, I think everything's connected. So that's why I think addressing mindfulness and stress really helps um, a lot of other symptoms and things like that. So I will see you all in the next video. This is getting so long per usual. Um, also, this will be the first video of the new year. So happy new year, happy 2019. I hope your year's off to a great start and I will see you all next video. <laughs>